Sardinian nationalism or also Sardism Sardismu in Sardinian, Sardismo in Italian is a social, cultural and political movement in Sardinia calling for national devolution, further autonomy, or even outright independence, from Italy. It also promotes the protection of the island's environment and the preservation of the Sardinian cultural heritage. Even though the island has been characterized by periodical waves of ethnonationalist protests against Rome, the Sardinian movement has its origins on the left of the political spectrum. Attempts for Sardinian self determination historically countered, in fact, Rome's centric Italian nationalism and fascism, which eventually managed to contain the autonomist and separatist tendencies. Over the years many Sardist parties from different ideological backgrounds have emerged even on the right and the center, all being in the minority, and with some of them making government coalitions of variable geometry with the statewide Italian parties. For instance, that also happened in the 2014 Sardinian regional election, where the combined result of all the nationalist parties had been 26% of the votes. Overview. In 1720, the Kingdom of Sardinia was definitely ceded by Spain to the House of Savoy after a plurisecular period of Spanish rule and a short-lived reconquest, abiding by the Treaty of London that followed the War of Spanish Succession. The Savoyard kings, who were forced to accept this island in place of the much more populated and profitable Sicily, were not pleased with the exchange to the point of making them want to dispose of what Cavour called the Third Ireland. Later, according to Mazzini who denounced part of the plot, by repeatedly trying to sell it to either Austria or France. For a long time, Sardinia would be ruled in the same way as it was during the Spanish period, with its own parliament and government being composed exclusively of men from the mainland. The only exception to this has been a series of revolutionary outbursts known collectively as Sardinian Vespers. Against the local Piedmontese notables in 1794, later led by Giovanni Maria Angioi, that ended only in the first years of the 19th century but did not succeed and were ultimately suppressed. In 1847, a segment of the Sardinian elites from Cagliari and Sassari, guided by the unionist Giovanni Ciotto Pintor, demanded the so called perfect fusion, aimed at getting the liberal reforms Sardinia could not have because of its separate legal system. A minority of Sardinian deputies, like Federico Fenu and the Federalist Giovanni Battista Tuveri, strongly protested against the merging and warned against the situation Sardinia could potentially find itself in. In the end, the King Charles Albert agreed to the request, however, he also dissolved what political bodies remained that could exert a modicum of control on the King's decisions over the island. Moreover, the later enlargement moves in the mainland on the Savoyard's part further aggravated the island's peripheral condition. Sardinia would end up being an even less significant overseas departement of the Savoyard domains, whose center of political power had always been in the Italian peninsula. The episode would lead Pintor himself to regret having made that proposal, Aramo Tutti, we all made a mistake, and would raise the Sardinian question. Question Sarda from then on, a broad term used to cover a wide variety of issues regarding the difficult relationship between Sardinia and the mainland. The Savoyard kings then proceeded to expand their domains through the unification of Italy. Sardinia, being already part of the Piedmontese kingdom from the very beginning, automatically joined the new polity, that changed its name to become the Kingdom of Italy in 1861. Sardism, which had long been confined to the island's intellectuals, made its political debut for the first time in the occasion of Ireland's independence 1921 with the Sardinian Action Party or PSDAs one of the oldest parties in Europe advocating for regional self-determination, which got 36% of the popular vote in 1921 regional election. Sardinian nationalism thus established itself as the most important mass movement in Sardinia, and the PSDAs a political force that Mussolini had to reckon with and eventually ban in 1926. Some Sardists, like Emilio Lusu, were forced into hiding and participated in the main European fronts of anti fascism, like Dino Jacobi and Giuseppe Zutas in the Spanish Civil War, while others decided to join the fascist party, hoping that by adhering to the regime Sardinia would get autonomy in exchange, a demand facing an immediate rejection or at least some attention from the mainland which they eventually got through some moderate funding concentrated in colliery for the local infrastructures. Overall, rural Sardinia showed little interest in the fascist state, let alone consent, while the bourgeois segments from the urban settlements were among the staunchest supporters of the regime on the island. 
Following the Second World War, the PSDAs, already weakened by the loss of many of its key members during the conflict, suffered a first split between the moderate wing and a much more radical one, led by Sebastiano Parisi, which developed into another party Lega Sarda, Sardinian League, but ultimately got poor results in the 1946 Italian general election. The return of democracy coincided with the comeback of the previously cracked down autonomist and separatist claims. A regional chamber to draft the statute was created on April 9, 1945, but did not operate until as late as April 26, 1946, because of the slow pace of negotiations at each round of the talks. The Sardinian Action Party was in fact in favor of the island being a federal state in the country rather than being assimilated into a region like in the mainland, but such demands were met with strong opposition from the Italian statewide parties, the Christian Democracy DC, around which the majority of the island's notables were then gathered, supported a generic regional framework with some devolution, geared towards accommodation for the central government in Rome. The Liberal Party PLI advocated for what little autonomy was needed to carry out the administrative functions, without the capacity to create any regional laws, the Communist Party PCI, which shut down the Communist Party of Sardinia two years earlier, was hostile to the idea of giving Sardinia any autonomy at all, considered to be a reactionary tool that was in the way of a transformation towards the ultimate communist society, the right-wing parties and the common man's front were against Sardinian autonomy, too, albeit for reasons motivated by Italian nationalism. In the end, the line prevailing was the one supported by the DC that, claiming to be willing to avoid serious institutional conflicts, ditched the federal hypothesis in favor of a binary system of governance agreed upon the region and the central state. As much as some important authors in the field of Sardinian studies regard the granted status as the acknowledgement of a distinct historical, geographic, social, ethnic and linguistic situation, the Sardinian specialty as a criterion for political autonomy ended up being specified just on the grounds of a couple of socio-economic issues devoid of any of the aforementioned considerations. As time was pressing, the Sardinian Regional Statute was eventually written by the Constituent Assembly in Rome, followed by a rapid review of each section and without further debate. Some unique articles showed up in the final version, mentioning state-funded plans called Piani di Renascita rebirth plans for the heavy industrial development of the island. One hundred years had passed since the perfect fusion, when Sardinia became an autonomous region of Italy. However, the statute's content upon which the autonomy was effectively based fell short of many Sardists' expectations. At the draft of the statute, Lusu's laconic comment was greater than, the lawyer Gennario Pinna went as far as stating, greater than. The PSDAs suffered another split in July, with Lusu leaving and founding the short-lived Sardinian Socialist Action Party. The Sardist movement experienced a new wave of support at the end of the 60s, when the Sardinian society started becoming aware that its cultural heritage had been gradually vanishing. Growing inequality was also being produced by a dual economic structure, with the labor and resources being moved to the sector focused on the petrochemical industry, particularly fostered by the PCI and the Italian, NATO, and U.S. military installations. By the 70s, Sardist claims were widespread with the support of many springing grassroots organizations, they ranged from supporting of the Sardinian Action Party to having harshly critical views towards it, and were also ideologically diverse, for example, the Catholic Union Democratica pro Sindependencia de Sa Sardinia, Democratic Union for Sardinian Independence, and the Socialist Liga de Unidade Nazionale pro Sindependencia de Sa Sardinia e su Socialismo. League of National Union for Sardinian Independence and Socialism", competing with each other based on their beliefs, were both founded in 1967. Some cultural circles, like Sata Campena and Su Papulu Sardu, also drew militants from the extra-parliamentary groups based on the island, and saw many Sardinian university students joining in. The youth wings in the town of Orgosolo were particularly active against land dispossession and the militarization of the grazing lands. In 1978, the movement Sardinia y Libertà, Sardinia and Freedom, was founded by Carlo Secchi and Rafael Caria in the city of Alghero. The PSDAs experienced another comeback in the 1980s. In the 1984 regional election, the party peaked at 30% in Cagliari and over 20% in Sassari and Aristano, gaining overall 13.8% of the vote. Therefore, due to its pivotal role in the newly elected regional council, Sardist Mario Melis was president of Sardinia from 1984 to 1989, when it managed to get 12.5% of the vote. 
Ever since, that result has not been repeated yet by the Sardinian Action Party, let alone any of the splinter groups emerging from it. The Sardinian nationalist movement is in fact rather disjointed and lacking in unity nowadays, it is composed mostly of several local and scattered grassroots organizations across the island that do not have a clear central policy-making authority, and besides, the different nationalist subgroups often disagree with each other on many key issues. Sardinian nationalists address a number of issues, such as the environmental damage caused by the military forces in fact, 60% of such bases in Italy are located on the island, the financial and economic exploitation of the island's resources by the Italian state and mainland industrialists, the lack of any political representation both in Italy and in the European Parliament, due to an unbalanced electoral constituency that still remains to this day, Sardinia has not had its own MEP since 1994, the nuclear power and waste on which a referendum was proposed by a Sardist party, being held in 2011 and the ongoing process of depopulation and Italianization that would destroy the Sardinian indigenous culture, Sardinian nationalism is a pacific movement that does not advocate violent revolution, proposing instead to achieve its goals within a liberal democratic framework. However, as an exception to the rule, there had been some issues in the past strictly related to separatist tendencies, the most worth mentioning being essentially three. First, the actions planned in 1968 by Gian Giacomo Feltrinelli to turn the island into the Cuba of the Mediterranean and liberate it from colonialism by making contact with several local nationalist groups. In the end, the attempt of the famous communist thinker to strengthen the pro independence militant lines, divided into the Socialist Front Nazionale de Liberazione de Sa Sardinia and the rightist Movimento Nazionalista Sardu, was nullified by the Italian secret military intelligence. Secondly, there had been in the 1980s the question of the so called separatist conspiracy. A secret plan apparently set up by some local activists to reach the island's independence in collaboration with Gaddafi's Libya. According to some reconstructions of the facts, the supposed Sardinian separatist conspiracy might have been a machination of the Italian secret services seeking to discredit the rising nationalist wave in the island. There were also separatist militant groups, like the Movimento Armato Sardo, Sardinian armed movement, claiming assassinations and several kidnappings. Finally, it should be mentioned the case of a number of bombings, the most notable of which being that in 2004 against Silvio Berlusconi in his visit to Porto Rotondo Albia with Tony Blair, the responsibility has been apparently claimed by some unknown anarcho-separatist militant groups, the presence of which never to be seen again. In 2012, a vote in the Sardinian Assembly to pass an independence referendum bill failed by one vote. In 2017, a Sardinian independence campaigner going by the name of Salvatore Dador in Sardinian Maloney died after a two-month hunger and thirst strike while imprisoned at UTA. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Political support. In the 70s, around 38% of the Sardinian population expressed a favorable view on independence. In 1984, another poll made by the second most widespread Sardinian newspaper La Nuova Sardegna also reported frustrations with the Italian central government in Sardinia, with the regionalist opinion being split across a spectrum ranging from calls for more autonomy in Italy to total independence from Italy. According to a 2012 survey conducted in a joint effort between the University of Colliery and that of Edinburgh, 41% of Sardinians would be in favour of independence with 10% choosing it from both Italy and the European Union, and 31% only from Italy with Sardinia remaining in the EU, whilst another 46% would rather have a larger autonomy within Italy and the EU, including fiscal power. 12% of people would be content to remain part of Italy and the EU with a regional council without any fiscal powers, and 1% in Italy and the EU without a regional council and fiscal powers. Besides, the same survey reported a Moreno question giving the following results 1. Sardinian, not Italian, 26%, 2. More Sardinian than Italian, 37%, 3. Equally Sardinian and Italian, 31%, 4. More Italian than Sardinian, 5%, 5. Italian, not Sardinian, 1%. 
A 2017 poll by the Ix Institute found that 51% of those questioned identified as Sardinian as opposed to an Italian average of 15% identifying by their region of origin, rather than Italian 19%, European 11%, and or citizen of the world 19%. All these numerical data have been exposed by researchers like Carlo Palla, a political scientist at the University of Sassari. Even other polls, published by professional organizations for public opinion research, contribute to corroborating, more or less, these findings and their accuracy. However, this support has heretofore failed to translate into electoral success for pro sovereignty Sardinian forces and a vigorous political action. In fact, this strong sense of regional identity does not seem to benefit any regional party, as it is also combined with lack of political engagement and a general distrust in institutions and parties, including those putting emphasis on Sardinian identity. Moreover, the nationalist movement has a well documented history of fractionalization. All attempts to unify the nationalist subgroups have so far failed, thus, the Sardist movement still suffers from being highly fragmented into a large number of political subgroups pushing different policies. All the Sardist parties put together usually win around 10-20% of the vote in regional elections, with not a single one managing to emerge as a serious competitor to the statewide parties. Such disconnect between societal views and political capitalization is called by some scholars, like Paula, the "...disorganic connection of the regionalist actors." Connessione disorganica degli attori regionalisti. Unlike other European regions with nationalist tendencies, even the local branches of statewide parties have incorporated regionalist elements in their political agenda, thus undermining the once distinctive Sardis demands. It is to be mentioned, for example, Francesco Casiga's Constitutional Bill N. 352 to reform the Sardinian statute, which ended up being eventually rejected by the Italian parliament and aimed to recognize the island as a distinct nation within Italy, and to grant it the right to self determination. The nationalist parties have disjointedly responded to the long-term accommodation strategy promoted by the statewide ones, some refused to team up, while others tried to work with the pro-Italian parties as coalition partners, in the hopes of applying further pressure from within to favor increased devolution. Either choice has been met with diffidence by the Sardinian electorate, leading the various Sardist parties to play a marginal role in Sardinian politics. In the 2014 regional election, for instance, more than a dozen Sardist parties of different connotations took part to the electoral competition, but yet again, because of their number and political fragmentation, they did not manage to win as many seats as they were initially supposed to, some think even because of a tactical mistake by the Progress-sponsored list, which was then led by the novelist Michaela Merja. Despite the combined result of all of the nationalist parties being around 26%, dropping to 18% for the pro-independence forces, they won only eight seats in the Sardinian Regional Council. Here is a summary of the results of the 2014 regional election for regional parties. Sardinian reformers, 6.0% of the vote and three regional councillors elected. Sardinian Action Party, 4.7% of the vote and two regional councillors elected. United, 2.8% of the vote and no regional councillors elected Project Republic of Sardinia, 2.8% of the vote and no regional councillors elected Party of Sardinians, 2.7% of the vote and two regional councillors elected Red Moors, 2.6% of the vote and two regional councillors elected Sardinian Democratic Union, 2.6% of the vote and one regional councillor elected People progress sponsored list 2.2% of the vote and no regional councillors elected Communities progress sponsored list 1.8% of the vote and no regional councillors Pili president united sponsored list 1.7% of the vote and no regional councillors Sardinia free zone movement 1.6% of the vote and one regional councillor elected Independence Republic of Sardinia, 0.8% of the vote and one regional councillor elected The Base Sardinia, 0.7% of the vote and one regional councillor elected Free Zone Movement, 0.7% of the vote and no regional councillors elected Forward Together, 0.7% of the vote and no regional councillors elected United Independentist Front, 0.7% of the vote and no regional councillors elected Sovereignty United Sponsored List, 0.2% of the vote and no regional councillors elected The list does not include the Christian Popular Union 1. 
7% of the vote and one regional council are elected because the party, despite being based in Sardinia and having rarely participated in general or regional elections outside Sardinia, claims not to be a regional party, but an Italian one. See also Sardinia Sardinian people Sardinian language Naragic civilization Politics of Sardinia Communist Party of Sardinia Republic of Mal de Venter <inaudible>